All right, we're back. We want to chat all things 2023 Women's World Cup. Lisa already put the teaser earlier in this episode, said we're 65 days away from the World Cup. We'll all be on Australia and New Zealand time this summer. It's going to be <laughs> quite a ride. Let's do. Let's have some fun with uh, with a World Cup roster stock watch. So we wanted to do things a little bit differently. Didn't want to come on on here and just say here is our mock roster because that's a very popular thing to do in the build up to a World Cup. We wanted to have some different stretches and different um, things to, to talk about within um, the potential roster that we could see very soon, sometime in June, essentially. Um, but last time we left this United States Women's National Team was in April, and it was billed as the final two friendlies against Ireland, as the final friendlies for the international team to get together before the official World Cup roster is named. Coming out of that pair of friendlies, Andonovsky saying, we feel good, we feel ready. There's two groups of players. There are players that we're going to send them back to, to their clubs and say, hey, keep up your fitness keep up your form and there's other groups of uh, players within a group that they're going to give specific instruction to things that they can work on that they are going to be looking at as a coaching staff through cup uh, club play to continue to evaluate and rate whether or not these players will go to the world cup so we've got seven weeks of regular season play some challenge cup games sprinkled along the way let's talk about some players who are maybe trending up and trending down, even if they may be considered quote unquote locks for this 2023 world cup. We got to start with the defensive end of the pitch. Of course, Lisa, let's talk about the goalkeepers. Um, you know, for people who don't know, you can go on.com and read my stock watch already. I have my most recent one out there and you can take a look at the players that I think are locks who are trending up and down, but let's talk a little bit about who's hot, for the goalkeepers. So I think you and I are probably in agreement that there's three goalkeepers who will probably go to the world cup. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen them throughout camps for an extended period of time over the course of, let's just say the better part of the last year. We don't even have to go as far back as two years, but maybe the last year to 18 months, it's been a listen there, Casey Murphy and Adriana French uh, in terms of who's uh, trending up and who's trending down. What are you seeing for the goalkeepers at this moment? Um, yeah, I think it's important to kind of look at them as a whole as these goalkeepers. Um, yes, for sure, three of them going to be headed to Australia and New Zealand um, this summer. But I, I and honestly, like, I'm not sure if like the three is actually even going to change at this point. Yeah. But um, kind of just putting that out there, I, I think yeah. Casey Murphy most recently trending up. Mm -hmm. um, for North Carolina Courage, she's coming off a big shutout win for the Courage this past weekend in the regular season. She's been a very consistent factor for North Carolina because although they haven't picked up points every single week in the regular season, she's been one that has been as consistent as can be for the, the North Carolina Courage side, despite them not being able to score enough goals, frankly. Um, Casey Murphy, for me, trending up in, in this position. And honestly, I, I think that A.D. French and Alyssa Nair trending down. Mm -hmm. I mean, a Alyssa Nair, uh, for one of for what it's worth, and and with this Chicago Red Star side, has been struggling. Chicago has not been able to pick up points. Um, they're at the bottom of the table. They're conceding goals. Um, they have. 18 goals against that's the most in the league right now and no you can't just look at the goals against and, and blame it all on the goalkeeper but there have been crucial mistakes that have been made by Alyssa Nair that concerns me a little bit in terms of the future of of this roster and kind of going forward with the U.S. because Alyssa Nair was the number one goalkeeper up until I, I think the last several months and, and maybe she still is but Alyssa Nair's stock for me has been dropping um, just it, with her play in the regular season and, and not being able to be as big of a brick wall as we've seen her be in the past. Yeah. I don't think that's unfair to, to take a look at, at club form and say, Hey, you know, like what's going on here. But I think you make an important note that it's a pretty much a team shape and, and team struggle that, that uh -huh. Nair finds herself not only captaining, but seeing in front of her uh, throughout 
these Red Stars matches. Um, but I think at this point in this stage in the game, um, if you're the national team technical staff, you coach, you're continuing to check in with your goalkeeper and just sort of say, hey, like, just keep it up, you know, yeah. clock in, clock out, get your game and match minutes. Um, because I think if you're the number one goalkeeper for not only the last cycle, but the last years in between leading up to this next World Cup, um, you're not trying to have your number one have any other mental struggles because it's clear right. it's clear that there's already some club struggles uh, going that they're having to face as well. But I mean, you know, we're we're looking at this trio that we think are going to go to the World Cup, and, and Adriana French has had to deal with some rotation out of Kansas City current. This is a player that we again that we think is going to be on that plane to Australia. But uh, when Kansas City kind of went ahead and, and went on that um, winning streak that started with Challenge Cup, it came um, with a goalkeeping change from Carolyn Quablon for the current. And she has said there's competition at the goalkeeping position, and we are happy that's a good problem. We want to continue to see and reward good performances. And we got to see A.D. French back in net. After a tough, uh, after a tough uh, loss, and and so she goes in there against San Diego, and unfortunately the team um, drops this result against San Diego 2-0. Now, we're looking at a lot of uh, new names in that Kansas City team, and maybe some of the defensive issues are, you know, lack of uh, chemistry or lack of time right. together. You know, like what are we taking a look at here, and and why are these, you know, how and why these goals are being conceded, but. Um, that's another player I think that you could look at as maybe kind of trending down in terms of just lack of lack of play. And then when we're getting to see French in these roles, unfortunately, you know, on the on the losing end of these things. So it's curious because it's like if we're looking at club play specifically, and we could talk about stock up. I mean, we talk about Aubrey Kingsbury with Washington Spirit, although we I don't necessarily believe that she's going to have enough here oh, wow. to make a case for the World Cup, unfortunately, because this player, despite the good club play through seven weeks at this point has not been a part of the national team picture since 2021, I believe. Yeah. It, it's, it's too much time removed. I feel like. Yeah. I think she got one cap in 2022 at the very beginning of the year. Um, very early, but yeah, I think that although Kingsbury has been playing so well in club and, and Washington spirit now at the top of the table, and she's been very sound defensively, I think she lacks experience it, to get, I mean, this is a world cup roster we're talking about. Like we are 65 days out. It is make or break at this point, And I just don't think she has enough experience to make this world cup roster. If this was a year ago, for yeah. sure, Kingsbury would be called in. Let's get her more experience, get her more caps time with the training team um, in, in training and in friendlies. But the fact that there are, is one more send off game for the United States before the world cup and in, in which the roster will, have already been made. You don't want to bring a goalkeeper in that just has one cap under yeah. under her belt, despite how good Kingsbury is doing at this point. Um, which I mean, it's puts Vlako Anonofsky into a little bit of a tough position. He, I'm sure, he's having conversations with these goalkeepers and and saying like, "Hey guys, like we're watching you. Like, what's going on? Can we pick this up a little bit for sure?" Yeah, no, I hear you on that. I mean, it's it's a it's a struggle because it's again, it's not like she hasn't. Uh, Kingsbury hasn't uh, been called up under Andonovsky. And it's it's curious to sort of see like all of this, this incredible hot streak that she's on right now with the spirit because it was her club performance in 2021 yeah. when they went all the way to the championship final that earned her those looks uh, in, in the national teams, in the national team camps. Uh, but then again, through club play, French with an incredible run with the current in 2022, start, got, to, got called in. Um, it's the ebbs and flows of everything. So I'm very curious about what we could see at that number three position. Although I think at this point, due to lot. consistency, I think we're going to see Nate Murphy at this yeah. point. Experience outweighs some of the other factors in it. Yeah. And the France, again, matter. was part of that. Yeah. Fr Nair and France are the two goalkeepers who were part of that 2019 World Cup roster as well. So you want to have 
players who who know what to expect uh, when they have to navigate group stages and knockout rounds and things like that. Let's uh, keep it on the defensive end of the pitch here. We want to talk about Stockwatch for United States women, women's national team defenders, player defenders who we think are going to be locks going into the World Cup. Uh, honestly, I think at this point, I thought I had locks for defenders, Lisa, but now I'm like, IDK, what's going on here? What are we looking at? What are we seeing? Um, I yeah. think Becky Sauerbrunn, we've seen her out with uh, with an injury, and obviously I think that's precaution, more precautionary than anything else. Um, this is a player that you would consider a lock for your defensive yes. side of things. Um, I would I would maybe say Alana Cook because she's been like the healthiest center back option um, throughout Andonovsky's national team camps while there was so much injury rotation that was taking place for the central defender role. It's how we got to see the um, introduction of Naomi Girma into these consistent camps. Maybe she's a lock as well. I hate to even say it like this because she is performing phenomenally, phenomenally with club at midfield in Portland Crystal Dunn is a lock on this roster, unfortunately, probably as a defender. Although, again, I think maybe she's making her case over seven weeks playing higher up the pitch. But I think we've seen her at left back for so long and pigeonholed into this one side of the pitch that the staff might not want to shake things up on the defensive side of things because I feel like this maybe was – Maybe this was a core of players, Lisa, where we thought there were like it was easy to pick some locks. And now with club play out of, you know, from April through through May now, we've got some players who are trending up and trending down. Um, yeah. I mean, I haven't even mentioned Emily Sonic yet, who has, again, typically been one of these players as part of the defender core. And I would consider her stock down because she's not even playing um, on a back line with club right now. She's featured yeah. as a midfielder with Laura Harvey and Noel Rain. I agree. I think it's very – if you're Vlako Anonofsky and you're looking to assess your defenders, and, and one of those being Emily Sonnet, um, who I don't think is a lock on this roster by any means, and she's not even playing in the position you want her to play in, well, from what we know, in the back line with O.L. Rain and Laura Harvey, it's a bit of a, a bit of a question mark. But w in terms of some of your other locks that you threw out there, yes, Alana Cook, um, I, I think that – there's just been a lot of investment into her as a player, um, and and you know that you can lean on her in these situations. Crystal Dunn, Becky Sauerbrunn, to me, Naomi Gurma is a lock, despite maybe um, not as strong of performances with San Diego as we've seen in the past, but I still think she's an incredible defender, even though San Diego has gone through some ups and downs. You have to look at the individual skill of a player and and perhaps this adversity that Gurma is going through right now with San Diego, um, finally getting back on the winning side of things just this past weekend will help a player like that. T to me, Naomi Gurma and Becky Sauerbrunn are like the locks for center back start at the World Cup. Um, I also think Emily Fox is a lock. Doing well. Is, Doing well. Is stock up at this point. Um, I, th I think she's going to the World Cup too. I really do. And, and the way that she's been able to play at North Carolina under a new system with a new team and still be able to succeed and contribute into the attack and, and be a lockdown 1v1 defender, it's been very impressive to watch Emily Fox uh, throughout this year stock up for her in that sense. We're, um, we're talking defenders, okay? And we've touched on Sarbrin as a veteran. Yeah. So I want to ask you about Kelly O'Hare. Yeah, that was my next one. She's dealing with injury. Yeah. She has been, but feels like her whole life. And that <laughs> sucks. Yeah. However, it it's it's the reality of the situation um, with a, a veteran player like that. Um, I think she's still like, I don't mean this in the way that it's going to sound, but it's she's still like a good fallback for Black Wanonofsky that – it's it's a player it's a player you know for a coaching gonna staff get. that they know what they're getting in. You know what you're going to get, and despite that, she is injury she she is injury prone, and she does have significant injuries that can creep up and and maybe not give you a full ninety minutes. You still know what you're going to get from her when she's on the pitch, and I think her play with Gotham when she's healthy and when she's able to be out there um, has been good. Has yeah, been I good think despite her coming back from injury. I think club play is is something that they wanted this player to make sure that they got 
you know, that she got back in, into form. And I think when we're looking at some of the veterans on this team, whether it's, it's, it's a Sour Brun or, or Megan Rapino, or in this case, Kelly O'Hara, like we've seen the minutes kind of expand a little bit for, for O'Hara over the time, over her time with, uh, with Gotham FC. So those early matches, like 45 minutes, maybe an hour, but then we've start, started to see that balloon to like 80 plus minutes, 90 plus minutes. And now we've got some fluctuating where we see like 25 minutes, 90 minutes. 55. An hour, awesome. minute. Yeah. We just saw the last game at 55 minutes. So it's like, it's kind of like uh, up and down a, a little bit. So I don't, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think that's an, un, an, un, uh, an unfair statement to say. I think maybe with this player, Maybe she is considered a lock if she's able to get consistent minutes, especially considering her background with this team and uh, her evolution within this team. Yeah. Um, but this is a player that the coaching staff takes. So, Kelly O'Hara, you're asking me the hard questions. I want to ask some hard questions yeah. here because one player that I've got circled yeah. uh, with some question marks around their name, Tierna Davidson. Yeah. Um, big, big question marks for me around this player coming back from her ACL injury and playing very significant minutes with Chicago Red Stars, but she doesn't look like the Tierna Davidson of, of mm. years past. She just doesn't. What are your thoughts on Davidson and, and stock at this point and, and U.S. roster? I think if you're looking just at club play and you're looking at, at the results and, and what we're seeing out of Chicago, I think this is a player that people would look at and say, well, this is a player who's trending down. Yeah. Um, I think that there's always more to players who are coming back from such a significant injury. Uh, I think with Tierna Davidson being is gone, uh, gone and out and unavailable for as long as she was in her return to play from an ACL injury. That's, that's not a, a little insignificant injury, right? That's an, in, that's often a lengthy injury. We're talking nine months minimum. And that's not if you've got setbacks or otherwise, but the one silver lining within this return of Davidson is that it looks like she's physically at a place where she's capable to play. She's getting regular starts, yeah. she's putting together 90 minute shifts. She's getting them with the number one goalkeeper and Alyssa Nair, but the other component that often comes, the other piece that comes with a significant injury and return to play like this is the mental component. Totally. I just don't know if being on a club team right now in Chicago is helping that component uh, for a player like Davidson. If you're, if the mentality, if part of the mental side of the game is getting up on a match day, knowing you're going to go out there and constantly be overloaded and yeah, constantly drowning. It's drowning. drowning, drowning, literally. So it, 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 it I think the, the mental side of it drops a little bit. So, um, which is, I mean, I, I also think her performance has been questionable at times, right? I, I don't think it's her fitness and I don't think it's right. honestly, it's more just when you're coming back from such a, a long devastating injury, your yeah. brain is up to speed. You're ready to go. You, you know what your body wants mm -hmm. to do, but sometimes your body just can't do it. Whether it's her, her, um, yeah. slow or quick twitch muscles that are giving her that acceleration and that explosive speed or her ability yeah. to cut as quickly and as smoothly and as efficiently yeah. as she was doing a year ago it, or two years ago, rather, it, it's not there at yeah. that point. And, and we see that. I think yeah. we see that sometimes with players who are yeah. coming back from an ACL, there's like, there's, there's yeah. different phases and different components and coming back from an injury like that. And one part of it is the physical side of that, which we both agree. That's not the issue. She's getting mm -hmm. started. She can physically play 90 minutes. And one of those phases and components is, is the mental side of things. And maybe yeah. those two things just aren't, uh, aren't connecting right now, which is unfortunate because we know we've seen Tierna Davidson on, on for club or for national team and, you know, who she is and, and what she can, can bring to the pitch. It's also unfortunate that her return, um, you know, really didn't come into play in, until that final international match in that camp against uh, Ireland, where she kind of saw limited minutes there as well. So there just wasn't enough time to really get her into, to a actual competitive match, even though she had spent some time in national team camp. So we'll see. We'll definitely see what, what happens there. I think we're, we're, again, we're talking 65 days at this point from, from the world cup. There's still some, some games to play. Um, but I think when you're looking at this defend the defender side of things, um, 
maybe you've got a, a starter for every single slot in the back. And then really what's up for grabs is perhaps those depth roles. And that's where you have those yeah. conversations about uh, a Sonnet or a Davidson or, or even a Sophia Huerta or Casey Kruger, even at this point, I think there would be folks out there who would venture to argue that Kruger is having the better defensive season yeah. in Chicago versus, versus Davidson. So it's uh it's, it's going to be interesting to see how things get, get laid out and what the coaching staff evaluates or values taking to the world cup uh, versus leaving some players off and leaving them at home. Let's start getting into higher up the pitch here. Let's talk about some midfielders um, because while we're talking about the, the stock watch and who's trending up and who's trending down part of this, like that we touched on with the goalkeepers and defenders already is lack of minutes that we've seen for some midfielders. So while we would typically have our locks. Like we, what well, I think we, it's safe. I don't want to speak for both of us, but I feel safe in saying that we both agree. Like a Lindsey Horan is going to the World Cup. Uh, Andy Sullivan going to the World Cup. But we haven't seen a lot of minutes from Roosevelt. And despite us not seeing minutes from Roosevelt in the regular season for quite some time, I still think she's a lot to go. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do. I really, really do. Um, <laughs> I do as well. I think I think Rose Lavelle is a lock for the World Cup. Honestly, the way that it's going, the last time we saw her play was actually with the U.S., right? Yeah. And then it was announced that she wasn't going to play in the second game against Ireland, right? Ireland? Yeah. Okay, so she played in the first game, and then we were like, okay, she's not going to play in the second. It's a very small injury. We're just precautionary. She's not going to play. And then since being back with O.L. Reign, we have not seen Rose Lavelle get time and minutes, and there's also been – no word about what's happening. Is it uh, what's happening? How injured is she? What actually yeah. does that mean? Is she training? Um, but for me, I think it's all precautionary. I don't think it's anything that dire. It's more like, Rose, your plane ticket's been booked for a while now. <laughs> Let's just keep you in a bubble. It's so true. That way you don't get yourself hurt. Frankly, that's what it is, which um, – it, that's how it goes sometimes when you have players that are as influential and as important as someone like a Rose Lavelle that's going to the the World Cup. Um, yeah. In terms of other midfielders, stock up for me, Ashley freaking Sanchez. 100%. All the way. Yes. Ten hundred percent. Like that is it. She has just been phenomenal with Washington spirit in the midfield. She has just found her rhythm and, and is growing with confidence and consistency week in and week out with the spirit. She's shooting with both feet. She's getting open looks. She's scoring goals. She's making heads up plays. She's um, defensively putting in a lot of good work off the ball yeah. as well. Really, really tremendous to see Ashley Sanchez. It's a, Maybe some of these bubble players that are bubble players in their mind yeah. um, are, are making more and more of an effort during this regular season. I think Sanchez is one that thought, I, I'm not I'm not a lock for the World Cup. And not only do I want to be a lock, I want to be a starter. I want to force him to put me on the bench and say, yeah. we need as many minutes from Sanchez as possible. And that's what she's giving right now. Huge stock up for Ashley Sanchez. Absolutely. I'm with you. I had her I had her on my stock watch for for dot com recently after six weeks of play. Um, I featured her on our NWSL star player index. You can go check that out on dot com as well. Players who are generating buzz throughout the league. And Ashley Sanchez is absolutely one of them. Totally. I think it's very helpful. Yes, of course, it's, it's helpful that she's playing alongside uh, some other great attacking players players um but she's 100 percent a player i think who was tasked with a certain level of things as mm -hmm. they return back to club and she's 100 percent delivering on those i mean in terms of other players who are, are doing well with club and, and continuing to to maybe uh really kind of sign their name on that roster sheet is probably christy muse i would have considered I her a lock i would have I considered agree. her a lock even before uh gotham's uh really good start here but as they continue to to grow over the course of the regular season. I think she has just shown through club play once again, what she can provide for this team in the midfield in case they need to call on her number. I mean, Julie Ertz back with angel city, yeah. she's getting more, uh, more games under her belt and looking like a player who's building into is, is, she a lock? is Julie Ertz a lock. Yeah, absolutely. Julie Ertz is yeah. a lock. Um, I don't think Julie, I don't think they, have Julie Ertz in that final April camp. And I don't think Julie Ertz signs with the club team if there's not a real shot at making a World Cup roster. Now, with Julie Ertz, um, I agree. 
um, put that out there. I agree. I think she is a lock. But is it at all concerning that there were two back-to-back matches, one Challenge Cup, one regular season, where she had excused absences with Angel City? Uh, she did not play. Um, now she's back. She played this past weekend with Angel City. But is that at all a concern about – priorities or things like that i know there was some questions out there on the inner space um and the inner space uh con- concerning to the coaching staffs probably not um eyebrow raising to to fans yeah i'm sure um with all of the emphasis that's placed on on club play and the the ongoing conversation around you know need for minutes and need for games i think the the assumption that people operate off of that is hey here are the games go play them Mm -hmm. um perception is reality for a lot of people and when there's a player who's made their return under all of those previous uh circumstances that were just talked about to have a couple excused absences, I think some folks are kind of like, well, what's the what's the deal here? But I think if it's – is it a concern for the coaching staff on either club or country? Absolutely not. God, They're probably no. like, you know what? That makes sense. You had this on your radar before you even signed this contract. Yeah. Here's your excused absence. Totally. It's all good. So those are, those are, you know, those are things, you know, I think that one of them was tied to um, their nonprofit organization, the Earth okay. Foundation. And those are things that are scheduled in far in advance. Yes. And, you know, I think we both agree that Earth is, is a lock for this roster. Yep. And let's say there were a dozen games with available for Angel City um, leading up to the World Cup. And let's just say if Julie Ertz even plays six to eight of those, that that is enough. Yeah, for the coaching staff. Um, I agree. I agree with you on that one, Ertz, uh, as well. Um, jumping back, I know you mentioned Christy Mewis with Gotham. This is a player that I was not too high on at the start of the season, um, just like with what she's been able to do and kind of getting back into the roster. It was always kind of a little bit anticlimactic watching a Christy Mewis mm-hmm. play for me. Um, now seeing her with Gotham, and and we'll get to the forward crew, but the the play that Christy Mewis has been able to do in the midfield, specifically linking up with the forwards on Gotham, Lynn Williams specifically has been tremendous. Uh, it's been really fun to watch Christy Mewis, who struggled last year with Gotham in the midfield due to a number of different things, formation, tactics, the team overall. And this year has really decided to turn things around uh, the way that Christy Mewis can, right? Doing everything she can in her power to turn it around. Um, stock up for me on Christy Mewis at this point. Yeah, absolutely. I think players... Again, we're, we're talking about lack of minutes. I think that's kind of a common thread here for players whose stock might be down. I think we're obviously looking at Taylor Korniak, who has not been able to get a lot of games mm-hmm. in with San Diego Wave. I believe it's due to an abdomen issue at this point that we're seeing. And Katerine Macario, another player trying to make her return back uh, from in a lengthy ACL injury, I think when she first suffered this injury, there was a lot of optimism in terms of her early recovery. Um, But I think in terms of where we're seeing her now, somewhere along the way, there was probably a setback. Um, And we are now talking about a player with Olympic Lyon that has two games left in their season. Um, in order for for them to get some some match minutes. I'm high on Macario. She's a player that I uh, enjoy watching play when she's, you know, fit and healthy. And I think she is one of those players that you look at as a a future generational player. I think we can't say that right now just because we only saw her for a short chunk of minutes in the Olympics. But then she went on and did what she did with um, OL. I mean, she's won a Champions League. She's won titles with them already, a leading goal scorer at at one point, and then suffered this uh, terrible ACL injury. Um, And now it looks like because of this, she could miss out on this upcoming World Cup. And she's a player that I'm like, if she's even like, you know, yeah, I I look at Makara as a player, like she can run, you take her. But the the games aren't there in front of her. So we don't even really know what that looks like. Right. And, and maybe she is training, right? We heard that from Julie earth before she came back, she was training with MLS Academy teams. Um, but Blacko was like, Hey, you've got to get minutes with the club. You got to sign. And now when we look at Katarina Macario, 65 days out from the start yeah. of the world cup and, and there's nothing on her radar, nothing on the schedule coming up for her to play. She's not signed with the team. Her club season is done in in, in Europe. 
what's going to happen, it is unlikely to me unless something changes, unless something's happening behind the scenes that Macario is going to the World Cup. Yeah, I hate it. I'm sad about it. I'm not even going to try. Yeah. Let's talk about the forwards now. Quickly move on. I don't want to talk about it. Move on. I can't talk about it. It makes me too sad. I want to move on. Let's talk about the forwards. Let's close out this episode with the attackers. We've got forwards who we think we are going to be locked for this World Cup. I think Sophia Smith is a lock for this World Cup. Alex Morgan is a lock for this World Cup. I think Lynn Williams should be a lock for this World Cup. I think Trinity Rodman should be a lock for this World Cup. And if she continues to get her minutes, knowing what we've heard from the U.S. coaching staff already, Megan Rapino is probably a lock for this World Cup. Yeah, I agree. I think Megan Rapino is going to the World Cup um, as to to be a role player. To be a role player, doubt mm-hmm. she will ever start a game. Doubt she will get more than forty five minutes. Mm-hmm. I don't know, kind of going out on a limb here, but she will be a role player. Come in at the end of games. Be be a training player. Be a training room player. Be a locker room player. A bench player. Um, and and understand her role in this World Cup is exactly that. And to to have her kind of turn the page on that and understand her role and be able to live it truly is going to help this team 100%. Yeah. So I think if that's if everyone's on the same page there, it's a lock for Rapino to be there. Um, as you mentioned, Smith, uh, Williams, Rodman, um, yeah. a couple other players. And those are two players trending up, Williams and Rodman. Two- Rodman, incredible, incredibly high trend right now for me. Stock up for Rodman. The work that she is doing off the ball has been tremendous. Her her defensive work, the mileage that she puts in off the ball, her ability to score goals and and play in those wide areas, cut inside. She's playing with the maturity of a, a seven or eight year veteran in this league, and she's only 20 years old. So fun to watch Rodman. Lynn Williams also stock incredibly high watching her uh, create nothing out of some or create something out of nothing with Gotham FC. She has just been tremendous for this team. She's got six goals for Gotham in the first nine games across all competitions. Um, and, And she started the year with the United States getting a goal after that long 10 month absence and her off the ball work is impressive. Imagine like a U.S. team with Lynn Williams and Trinity Rodman off ball press. I'm smiling. Press. Like people who aren't watching us live, I'm just smiling ear to ear. Tremendous, tremendous. Um, someone else that I think that has been on the bubble of this roster. However, I believe that her stock is rising. Ashley Hatch. Yeah. Uh, this is a forward that has been in and out of the the U.S. roster and called up. Um, most recently was called up for the most um, recent April friendlies. And it was almost like she wasn't getting enough time. Is she going to get enough minutes? What's going to be the role for Hatch? And her performance with Washington Spirit has been tremendous, whether it's scoring in the run of play, her her vision on the ball, her penalty kick goals. She's proved that she's doing something it, right and perhaps what the coaching staff has asked of her with Washington spirit trending very, very high for me. Stock is up for Ashley Hatch. No, I hear you on that. Look, it's hard to ignore what many of the spirit attackers are doing right now for Mm -hmm. club. I think um, Hatch and her inclusion on national team rosters has really been predicated on what she can provide as a secondary central forward. Um, and I think that's been the struggle that we've seen sometime over the course of these national team camps. Can she turn it on when you're coming off of the bench, when you don't have a 90 minute game in front of you to build over, are you able to get in there and make an impact in 20 minutes? And maybe there were some question marks there coming out of, um, that final April window, but there is no questions about what she's doing for club. She's performing well alongside her other national team teammates. And perhaps that will be a factor that coaching staffs look at as well, who has the chemistry with each other, who's, you know, which players are familiar with each other and the movement on the pitch, et cetera, et cetera. I think we also have to include Alyssa Thompson in this conversation. This was the player that was brought in light of Mallory Swanson's patella tendon injury we didn't have mal listed as a lock for this one because of the lengthy amount of time that that type of surgery and recovery requires but they already had a protocol in place 
they had Alyssa Thompson on the plane ready to come on in to this national team camp against Ireland. And she's making an early case, not only for the plane to Australia, but really for rookie of the year in uh, NWSL play with Angel City. She's got four goals already across all competitions. Uh, absolutely just a menace yeah. on the pitch when it comes to getting on the ball and directly attacking back lines. Yeah. I would say the stock is up for this player. I just don't know who gets left off if they decide there's enough here to bring a very young player to I, the World Cup. I mean, I think she's making a case for herself. She's already yeah. got called up. She's already got capped. She's already got a goal, right? Like, I think I think that she's on the plane. At this point, Alyssa Thompson's on the plane because yeah. her I stock. I mean, we're like, making the roster. Alyssa Thompson's sure. on the plane. But just because her stock is so high right now, and frankly, this there's some stock down of – other players that yeah. have been called in. I think you look at one midge purse forward for Gotham yeah, no minutes right now. in and out of, of the uh, U S roster call-ups um, was in for a while and then out and then back in at the end of things. And, and she's been dealing with a hip injury and has not gotten yeah. minutes for Gotham um, and just uh, lack of minutes and, and injury wise stock down for, for purse. Unfortunately, I just yeah. don't think that with 65 days left, she would be half. She would have to push someone out of that man. position. Um, Injuries just, suck, man. Like because I, I think we saw really early on too, like these glimpses, like just these glimpses of, of really good connectivity between Williams and Purse, as well. Yeah. Like thinking like, wow, like what are we, what are we about to start seeing here with between Mewis and Williams and Purse? And you know, unfortunately, we've got um, a few weeks now with Purse unavailable for Gotham FC games with uh, with a hip, hip injury. And so we'll see. And still no Chris Impress getting minutes, training, yeah. anything with it, with that, just kind of putting that out there. I know people in our chat asking about press and, and what's happening there. Um, remember, she had to get another surgery uh, a few months ago. So, I mean, injuries suck, right? Yeah. So uh, unlikely that we will see Chris Impress at the World Cup as well for the United States. Um, just really crappy yeah around there's there's a ton of players i think when we go when we look back at this in this entire stock watch where we're just looking at and injury and time are part of that equation where it's just the return to play has has taken the amount of time that it's needed but the time in the build-up to the world cup is just running out so it's just um just a really kind of sucky component to, to, to just had to have discussed throughout this entire uh stock watch but i'm sure we'll you look maybe we'll alex do morgan we didn't even mention alex morgan right she's a lock for this i mean i said she was a lock early on okay. but i mean we didn't okay, we didn't sorry. mention we didn't mention why i mean no, lock, lock alex morgan her. is a lock because she's a she's alex morgan and, and b she's been in good form from last season into this season so um she's she's on she's on the plane yeah i said i said early on that my yeah, lock is a lock our Morgan Rapino as, as the vets, um, Williams, Rodman would be a lock for me at this point, Smith yep. at this point. Um, and then maybe there's a case for, for Thompson or a case for Hatch. It just depends yeah. on who staff, what the staff values and what, who and what they want to bring. But I'm um, right there with you on those locks for sure. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I look, uh, it's 65 days, but there's still time for us to do another one of these. If, if folks have enjoyed it, there's still some games in NWSL that will take place that can maybe dictate some things. Um, let us know if you enjoy the stock watch. We'll, we'll do more of these. If you, if you like them, 